experience on that. But today, our main focus is I'm going to give you this tutorial on the methods and some of the uh, products that I use while I'm uh, cleaning out the air conditioning condensation line. And it looks like I'm condensating right now because it is brutal hot in Florida. <laughs> Whew. When you're outside, you're walking around, you got to bring water, and you got to bring a napkin, a towel, something to cool you off and dry you up. So yeah, let's get inside. Let's take care of this. Let me run through this tutorial really quickly. Hopefully, it helps you uh, to learn what you should do for preventative maintenance, or at least give you the heads up when you've got an AC technician come to your home. You can see what they're doing and make sure they're doing it right, and they're not charging you an exuberant amount of money for something that really doesn't cost a whole lot. You don't want them to quote you a new air conditioner when all they did was just blow out the light. You know what I mean? So let's take care of that. Let's get inside. Let's get out of the sun and get on with the video. Let's go. Okay, so here we are in my garage and behind me is the air handler for the air conditioning system that I have at my home. In your residence, it could be up in the attic or it could be in the utility closet inside. Either way, hopefully you have access to the condensation line so you can use some of the methods that I'm going to show you today to keep it nice and clear of any obstruction. Okay, one thing I have to say, I got to put it out there, I am not a professional by any means in the field of air conditioning or refrigeration. I don't have any formal training, I don't have a license. What I do have is a general common knowledge that I've achieved either by going into YouTube, watching videos and tutorials, going out and reading on blogs and in forums of what both professionals and amateurs do to maintain their system. Hopefully some of these procedures that I'm going to show you today work for you and it helps you save some money and keep your equipment running well. Now let me put down the camera. Let me set it up on a tripod, turn it around so we can look at the condensation line and I'll show you some of those procedures. One of the things that I do to maintain my air conditioner working properly is to check this condensation line periodically. Condensation is when the unit is working, it is sweating, if you will, and that sweat, that water is dripping down and accumulating in the pan of the handler and then it drains out along this line outside of the home and in my case underneath the garage and it comes out on the other side. So keeping this line free and clear is one very good preventative maintenance thing to do. Now you'll notice I have this here and many units have it, not all. This is a safety switch, a kill switch if you will. If this line here gets backed up and the water cannot flow out freely, what happens is the float that is inside right here will rise up. When the water level rises, this will rise up and it'll act like a kill switch and automatically turn off your air conditioning handler. So if you ever feel it warm inside and you say, my air conditioner is not working, it's not cold, it could very simply be that if you have this type of safety switch, it may have backed up with water and it triggered and shut off your system. And one of the ways to clear the lines that I use regularly is with the use of these tablets, these pan treatment tablets. And it says right there for condensate drain pans. They're specifically made for this procedure that I'm going to show you. And these blue tablets here, if I can open up the bottle, these blue tablets, please do not consume these. They are not to be taken orally. <laughs> uh, you drop these inside of the pan and they will dissolve and they'll start to come out and the water turns blue and they'll start to clear out the line and the pan inside. But Dom, how do I put these tablets in the pan? Good question. In my case, it's just removing six screws that I have here. Some may have more, some less, but you remove the cover, the front cover, or if you have some other type of access panel, and then you just drop the tablets right in the lower portion of your handler, right in there. There may be some water already there. You just drop it in, they'll start to dissolve. And as I said, the water turns blue and it'll start to flush out the line. Uh, but Dom, how many tablets do I put in? That's another very good question. Summer, you get an eight plus and 50 gold stars. The bottle has instructions and it states if this is the very first time that you're doing this, you've never done it before, you're doing it for the very first time, you should drop in two tablets for every ton 
of your air conditioning unit. Now, what does that mean? So depending on the square footage of your home, depends on what size unit you have. In my case, I have a four ton. So if this was my first time doing it, I would drop in two tablets per ton. That's eight tablets in total. I would drop them in there. On a regular preventative maintenance schedule, I only need to drop in one tablet per ton. So that's four tablets that I drop in every month, every month and a half. That's my schedule. And it keeps that line free and clear. Another way is to use a pipe cleaner. Now this one here has two size and a flexible metal cable on it. So what I do is just run that through the PVC piping there and clean out the line. And that helps me keep it free and clear. Another thing that I use is an attachment that I put onto my shop vac. So this attachment here fits various size hoses of shop vacs and you just attach it like that and you'll attach it to the PVC piping and you'll either suck out the debris and the blockage or you can blow it out depending on what direction you have your uh, shop vac running. Now primarily I use this on the outside as well and I'm going to show you now how I set it up out there. Come on. So this is where the condensation line comes out from my home. As you can see, it is currently dripping, which is a good sign because the little bit of condensation that's building up is flowing through the lines on the inside by the handler and coming out and escaping here. So that's good. Now I'll show you what I do when I attach my vacuum hose. I have the adapter on my vacuum hose here and all I do is just pop it in right underneath like so, turn on my shop vac and suck out any dirt and debris that may be trapped in there. And it's as simple as that. And if you do this regularly, I'm telling you, you're going to save yourself a lot of money. Okay, so we're back inside and you see how I utilize this attachment outside and I also do it on the inside as well. Now, if I have a blockage that is just not clearing out, I've done all the pipe cleaning and I've used the shop vac and it still doesn't work, I might need something with a little more power, a little more oomph. That's where this comes into play. This is a CO2 cartridge blaster and these are the CO2 cartridges that go inside of it and how you drop it in is you unscrew the cap, you drop it in, the cap there has a pin, it punctures a hole in the tip and it's ready to go. It has a cool safety switch, which is up right now, so it prevents me from squeezing the trigger and accidentally blowing out some air. These cartridges and this unit blows out uh, 800 PSI, that's pretty strong. And when you put the switch down, now you're ready to go and it's uh, gonna blast out air. So I'll show you how I use this on my PVC piping. I simply remove it right from here and this tip here, this rubber tip, I'll just push it into the PVC piping and I'll just manually hold it there as firm as I can and then I'll just blast out the blockage. Sometimes it'll use one canister, it might use two canisters, but guaranteed this will clear any obstruction that you have in that line. Well, there you have it. Those are some of the products and some of the procedures that I use to maintain my condensation line free and clear of any obstruction and keep that equipment running well. Hopefully, you can apply some of this information at home yourself, if you can. And if you can't, at least when you call the professional, I mean, we all have to call the professional sometime, right? You've got a general understanding of what may need to be done in your home. And you can see that it should not cost a lot of money. You don't want them charging you $10,000 for something that could probably just cost $100, let's say. Now, I'm not saying all technicians out there are shady, but there are shady characters in every profession. I know I don't want to get ripped off. I'm sure you don't want to get ripped off. So it's good to know what needs to be done to the system. And if you're able to do this yourself, you're going to save yourself a lot of money for sure. If you enjoyed the video and this content, Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you back here real soon. Take care.